Hey guys, this is going to be the recap video for all team training that we had back on October 6th. I apologize it's taken me so long to get this recap video out, but I lost my voice last week and I sounded like a terrible frog. It's coming back a little bit, but I didn't want the whole voice to sound super squeaky. So I apologize that it's taken me this long to create this video for you guys, for those that weren't able to be there. So I'm going to try to keep it brief and condensed as much as possible. We did have two hours to cover a lot of information. So hang in there with me. If you were not able to be there, there's a lot of good information that we're going to cover in this video about what's coming next for ACF Kids, where we're going, changes that you've been seeing around, and uh, just a few highlights we're going to cover. We're gonna be talking about classroom improvements that you've been seeing, a couple of housekeeping items, just a few things that I wanted to talk to everybody about just to make sure that we're all, all on the same page. And then we will move into Christmas and everything that we have planned for Christmas and ACF Kids for 2024. So. Let's go. If you are a teacher in Vista or Magnificent, you may have noticed the tents that are now in those classrooms. These tents are going to be called quiet tents. We want to give them that title and that label so that when we talk about them in the classroom, it gives that designation of what type of tent it is. We want this to be a quiet tent. It wasn't just an idea that Tiffany and I woke up one day and said, hey, let's throw a tent in the classroom. This was thought through with careful planning and talking to our teachers, noticing the room and trying to make the most of our space that we have and recognizing that we have a lot of kids that have sensory issues and they want a place that they can go retreat to and feel safe. So the quiet tent is a workaround to the small rooms that we have to work with and also creating an environment where these students can feel that they have a place to go and retreat to so its intention is to be a quiet area, to read a book, uh, sit with a stuffed animal, sit and play a little bit, uh, have a quiet retreat for them. They can wear headphones and just have a space away from the chaos. It is not intended to be a pillow fight fort. It's not intended to be a uh, no girls allowed fort or no boys allowed fort. It's not intended to be a, let's see how many kids we can cram into this tent at one time. It's intended to be a calm area. So two to four kids at a time, it can fit four kids sitting down, reading a book and uh, snuggling with the pillows. I know this is going to be an adjustment. Um, anytime you put something new in the classrooms, the students are going to go crazy and get excited. And so it is going to take some time to teach them the rules. And the rules are a couple students at a time. It's meant to be quiet. It's meant to be a calming area. And students that don't treat it with that type, with those rules in mind, will be asked to be playing somewhere else. My hope is to give these tents a shot through Christmas. And then if by Christmas time, we are still hearing from our teachers, I wanna hear from you guys. I appreciate the feedback that these tents are just not working and it's not doing what we want them to do then we can come up with a separate solution. But I do ask that we give it a good honest try and try to create uh, this space for our kiddos so that they have a spot to go. Other changes coming. Tucker is one of our classrooms that we have been trying to open so that we can pull kids from Magnificent, pull out our kindergartners, and then pull out our first graders from Maya High so that those two classes, kindergarten and first grade, can have their own classroom in Tucker. So basically our elementary school side is going to be cut in half and be two individual classrooms. The way this is going to work is pick up and drop off will happen both in Tucker and in Mile High. And then uh, small groups are going to happen in Tucker and in Mile High. In the middle, they will combine in the Mile High side to do combined worship together where the kindergartners and first graders will be invited into that side of the room. The second and third graders get to then be the examples of how to worship. So the second and third grade teachers, you guys get to kind of have that those conversations with your kiddos of what it means to invite the younger kids into our class. Now we get to model what it looks like. And then, uh, so you'll be combined for worship and then for the video. Both sides will be doing the Connect HQ curriculum so that way, when we break off into small groups, both classrooms can be talking about the same small group questions. Now, given the lesson, sometimes it's a large group game or sometimes it's individual small groups. I hope that teachers in both Tucker and Mile High can collaborate with each other because they'll be doing the same curriculum. 
and they can make the determination between them on whether or not they wanna do a combined game or if they prefer to do it separated in their own classrooms. My goal is that this is going to help minimize the chaos and Magnificent. We're running anywhere from 24 to 35 kids in that room, which we just can't continue to do because it's not safe and it's too crazy. And so being able to alleviate that from that room, as well as give more attention to the first graders and be able to have a separate classroom for them to get their own individual attention and be met at their own level and their own age group, as well as help with the uh, mainly the pickup issue that we have is just taking a long time. That's a big room to try to call kids over to one side of the room to get to one door. So there's a lot of different issues that we think opening Tucker is going to solve. Now, in order to do that, we need teachers to staff it. Now, right now I have talked to a few of you about wanting to transition into that classroom or step into that role. But in doing so, it's also pulling you from another role that you're currently in. So the bottom line is we need more teachers to staff it. I don't want to open a classroom that we can't sustain and create that whiplash for our students and have them go back and forth and back and forth. So we want to know that when we make this change, it's sustainable. My hope is to have this launched by November um, and I'm recruiting in every possible way that I can think at this time and we are still coming up short. So I wanna call on you guys to kind of help me with that and think about somebody who's maybe serving or isn't serving yet and invite them into serving with you even on a trial basis or on a every other week basis. That way they can see what kids ministry is about. We can try them in other classrooms and that way they can find what age group they really like teaching in. And that way we can have more people join our incredible team so that we can have the classrooms open that we need in order to accommodate the incredible number of students that we see in and out of our doors. We see anywhere from 275 to 350 students every week. So we have a lot of kids and we just want to ensure that they have an environment that they are seen and valued and it's not just a crazy chaotic environment the entire hour. So uh, I appreciate your help on that as we move forward in expanding our space. The other change with the mile high and Tucker separation is we're going to bring more fun to the elementary classrooms. And I've heard a lot of feedback from students and parents and teachers that the classroom itself is just boring and that is something that we definitely don't want to hear when kids come to their kids church is that when they go it's boring so we're going to try to change things up a little bit and have it be a place of fun and enjoyment and connection and friendship building so a few changes so if you're an elementary school teacher please tune in here we are going to do away with the video at the beginning where the kids have to sit for 20 minutes when they first get dropped off i know that this is going to be an adjustment but what's happening right now is that first 10, 15, 20 minutes that those kids go is their opportunity to learn each other and get to know one another. And instead they're being uh, sat down in a quiet area and then they really don't get that opportunity to free play or get their energy out. They go in and they sit and then they do their lesson and then they go home. And so I think we're missing a big piece on that relationship building and friendship building. So what we're going to do is have stations, a few stations, similar to our other rooms where it's uh, free play when we first get dropped off. Tucker and Mile High are going to have an Uno station, a Jenga station, a coloring station, and a reading station. So we've been seeing a couple of things in those rooms right now where there's now bean bags in one area, there's books on both sides, there's going to be a coloring station on both sides, we're going to have tables on both sides so that um, we can have Jenga and Uno. That way when the kids get dropped off, we want them to go jump in and immediately start having fun. So this is going to be an adjustment. So I appreciate uh, your grace and your patience as we kind of navigate changing this up and setting that new environment for the kids. They can come in and have fun with their other kids and go to a station and enjoy it. So talk to me about your concerns. Talk to me about things that you're seeing as we start transitioning into this. Uh, but ultimately the goal is to allow those relationships to be fostered in between our students so that they can make friends and build those relationships as they continue to grow in age. Next, we're moving into a couple of housekeeping items. Just a few bullet point things I'm gonna run through really quick to make sure that we're all on the same page, moving forward in the same direction, on the same train, going to the same location. So the first one is Remind. If you serve, what? If you serve an ACF Kids, you should be part of a Remind group. So if you don't have this app downloaded, we definitely wanna make sure that you have the app downloaded and then get with your service coach 
Every service has their own service coach. So connect with either myself or your service coach and we can get you plugged into that group. The services app is how you know when you are scheduled. I email out all of our service requests on Monday morning. So you should be getting those emails. And if you're not, please let me know. And then you will use the services app or you can respond to the email, either accepting or declining the uh, option to serve. We ask that you accept your service time by Thursday. That way we can solidify our schedule by Thursday evening. And that helps alleviate the stress of doing it on Friday or Saturday. That's technically our lead team's weekend so that we are set to go on Sunday. So uh, I, I appreciate your help in getting those responses in my Thursday. Your services app is also where you will put in your blockout dates. We ask that you put in blockout dates of times that you know you're going to be out of town for trips, vacations, holidays coming up. We have a lot of holidays coming up. And if you know you're going to be out of town and unable to serve for that week, I ask that you put in those blockout dates because I can see those on my end. So it just helps me uh, go out long in advance to make sure that we can schedule for those spots and for those times. So if you're if you can do that 30 days in advance, that just really helps all of us do the scheduling that we need to do on our end. Last but not least, we want to have our new family station manned by one of you guys. So what's happening right now is we have a service coach that oversees all of our check-ins. And then me and Tiffany typically are running around talking to parents or families or making sure the classrooms are set to go and helping tend to your needs. And we want somebody to be specifically tailored to meeting and greeting our new families that attend ACF Kids because it's a really bad experience if they show up for the first time and they come to the new here, start here desk and then there's nobody there to greet them immediately with a smile and a hello. So we want somebody there for every service. And what this looks like is it's a 10 minute slot during check-ins. So for anybody that's already serving, it's going to overlap your serve time already. You'll just start out going to huddle and then you go to the new family desk. We'll teach you everything you need to know on what to do to get them in the iPads, get them signed in, get their name tags and invite them into their new classrooms and then welcome them into the main service. That way they feel seen and valued and acknowledged and that first time experience is a positive one. So if you've never done this before, but you like greeting people, you like making them feel welcome, let me know and then I can get you hooked up on the service time that you serve, that would be the time that I would have it signed up. We can also do it at the tail end if you wanna serve and then do it for the next service time. Um, it's whatever works for you. We definitely have some spots open that we can be flexible on that, but we definitely wanna see that station manned by our incredible teachers. So let me know if you're interested in that. All right, moving in to Christmas. So Christmas this year, we have nine services that we are going to be hosting. Seven are gonna be at Eagle River, and two of them are going to be at our new campus at Northeast. So what the theme for this year is going to be, Tiffany and I got together for lunch and we it took us probably 30 minutes to try to figure out what we were going to, to make our overall theme for ACF Kids. And the theme is going to be, where are you Christmas, Whoville inspired. So where this came about was because we're having Christmas in two locations, it's a play on words of where are you Christmas? Well, we're in two locations this year. It also pulls from the song from the Grinch movie, Where Are You Christmas? If you don't know it, look it up because I'm still a little bit sick and I don't want to sing for you, for you right now. Um, but what we're going to do is we're basically going to turn ACF Kids into a Whoville Wonderland. We're not going to bring in the Grinch. We're not going to bring in Santa Claus, but we are going to pull from the whimsical feel of Whoville. So how we're going to do this is bring to light the Whoville uh, buildings, lots of string lights, gaudy uh, wrapped presents. And the way we're going to pull this off is by partnering with you guys to have three craft nights between now and Christmas, getting together on a Thursday night and uh, crafting and getting the space ready for December. So those dates are going to be November 7th, from four to six, it's a Thursday night. Then next Thursday, November 14th, from four to six. And then November 21st, from four to six. You're welcome to come to any or all of these events, but we're gonna be crafting and painting and present wrapping and, and hanging string lights. We're gonna have Christmas music going. We'll have some hot chocolate and some goodies for you guys. So you're welcome to come, bring your kiddos to come help. 
there will be something for everybody to do. So it's just another opportunity for us to get together outside of our service time, outside of being in a classroom to make friends with others that are serving on our team and get to help be a part of bringing Whoville to ACF Kids. So uh, signups are in the serve team room if you wanna sign up for those. Uh, I appreciate the signups, that way I can send email reminders to anybody who's interested for those events. And then the fourth event is going to be Sunday, November 24th. That's going to be after service. So from one to three, we're then going to transform all of ACF Kids. So all of the crafts that we've done up until that point are then going to be put up in our ACF Kids space. So that way all of December is gonna be decorated for Christmas. So that Sunday the 24th is going to be another decorating party, not craft party, but decorating party, where it's gonna be the same thing, Christmas music, lots of ha uh, hands on deck to be able to pull it all together to make Whoville come to life. Um, and then Christmas Eve service. So Christmas Eve service, going along with the Where Are You Christmas theme, is going to look like a classroom rotation. Don't freak out, it's gonna be great. So what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, all of our students get dropped off in the classrooms that they're normally dropped off to. And then we are going to have rotations for the craft, a rotation for a game, a rotation for uh, worship, and then a stage play. So the point is for the teachers that are teaching that day is to play on the, okay, we're gonna go find Christmas. Where is Christmas? Where can we find it? Is it in the craft? Let's go, let's go find Christmas in the craft. Maybe Christmas is all about this incredible craft we're gonna do. Maybe Christmas is all about this game we're about to play. Maybe Christmas is all about the worship we're gonna sing, the fun song and dance we're gonna do. And then the final piece of the puzzle is they're gonna come see a stage play put on by ACF Kids. And the stage play is going to have uh, two part characters, which is two. One character is going to be upset that they've done all of these fun things and they're still confused that they can't find Christmas. And then that other character is going to then bring about that Christmas isn't about all of those things. It's not about where Christmas is or what Christmas, what you do. It's about baby Jesus and the story of the manger. So that's where we're gonna tie it all together to the true meaning of Christmas in a stage play to then teach the story of Christmas Eve. So if you're interested in being a part of the stage play, I have a sign up for that in the surf team room as well. Right now uh, it's me and Tiffany and we have two other teachers that have already signed up, but we would love to have other people in that rotation. Cause like I said, we have seven services that we're trying to pull off at Eagle River and we're gonna be doing the stage play two times per service. So that's 14 plays we're gonna put on. That's a lot of time to play a Whoville character. So we love to share the joy and the magic with you guys if that's something that gets you excited. So let me know and then we'll be able to pull you into the planning as we write the script together. Uh, the last thing for Christmas Eve is you are invited to wear Christmas Eve pajamas on Christmas Eve. All of our teachers and lead team are gonna be invited into that so that we can join in on the whimsical feel of Whoville, not necessarily big gaudy characters because I know a lot of families like to show up and do family photos. So we figured Christmas pajamas is a simple compromise to still be able to bring some fun and enjoyment and the kids will be invited to wear their Christmas pajamas too if they would like. All right, I know that was a lot of information to cover. If you have questions about anything that we've talked about or maybe you want some clarity on some things that we've touched on, let me know. I'd be happy to explain them. You can shoot me an email or even just give me a call. I'd be happy to uh, let you know a little bit more in detail since this was a very quick, brief version of what we covered. We definitely expanded on some of these things a little bit more when we met in person. So um, the more information you want, the more I'm happy to offer. I really do appreciate every single one of you. I absolutely love our team. I love seeing everybody that showed up for all team training and the collaboration that we're able to do. We did some fun speed dating, speed friend dating. So we got to meet other people and ask some fun questions. And if you weren't able to be there, I definitely encourage you to come to some craft nights so that you can also have that opportunity to meet more people, uh, maybe meet a friend that you didn't even know was serving on ACF Kids and then serve with somebody that you enjoy serving with. That really does help make serving that much more fun when you can do it, somebody, do it with somebody that you just enjoy being around. So I love you guys. I appreciate all of you. I'm here for you. If there's anything that I can be doing for you, anything that we can be praying over you, 
Me and Tiffany meet every Thursday at Jitters and you are welcome to join us in overall ACF Kids Prayer from 9.30 to 10. It's a welcome invite for anybody that just wants to show up and be a prayer warrior for our kids, for our teachers, for our serve team and for our church. Uh, so yeah, that is an open invite for anybody that wants to be there. Just know that we're praying for you. We love you guys and we appreciate you. And uh, I love, I love working with you guys. Love you guys.